from Kampikawa again, coming to you with a story time for Constellation Station Week. Now, we started the first half of this story earlier today in our story creation session, and now we're going to finish it. This is the story of Hercules. So, where we left off, Hercules had completed his first labour, which was slaying the Nemean lion, giving us the constellation Leo. He then completed his second labour, which was killing the Hydra, which gave us our next two constellations, both Cancer the Crab and the Hydra, the constellation itself. So the next few labours don't have any constellations attached to them, so we're just going to go through them quite quickly with the help of this map. So this is showing the distance that Hercules had to cover to be able to complete all 12 of his labours. As I mentioned, this story is being told by Percy Jackson, who's not particularly impressed with the Greek gods, hence him labelling this map Hercules' 12 stupid tasks. Task 3 saw Hercules capturing alive this enormous boar that had been terrorising a lot of the village in King Eurytus' kingdom. Then, frustrated that Hercules had managed this, King Eurytus asked him to capture this deer, which was sacred to the goddess Artemis. He expected that Artemis would then kill Hercules for his trying to capture her sacred deer, but Artemis wasn't very impressed with the king for trying to bait her in that way, so she let Hercules on his merry way. For Hercules' fifth labour, he had to clear out these birds that were eating all the food in an area called Stymphalia. So they're known as the Stymphalian birds. He succeeded in this, and then King Eurythus wanted to humiliate Hercules into failing to perform his tasks, so he asked him to go and clean out this massive stable in an area called Alice. Hercules received payment for doing this task, so then when he completed it, King Eurythus said it didn't count. Tasks 7 and 8 took Hercules a long time because King Eurythus sent him to the two opposite corners of the land. First down in the south to the island of Crete to capture the Cretan bull, then all the way up to Thrace to acquire four of the king there's horses. For task 9, King Eurytus' daughter wanted one of the gold belts from the Amazon warriors. So Hercules went all the way to Amazonia to acquire one, and Queen Hippolyta, like in the Wonder Woman movie, was happy enough to give Hercules her one, provided that he come back with it. But one of her generals on the shore misunderstood what was happening, and it caused a bit of a battle, and it was really not very good. But he did bring the belt back, and so he completed this labour. Hercules' tenth labour brought him further west than he'd ever been before, to Iberia, to acquire some more cows. I don't know why King Eurythus wanted so much livestock from Hercules, because that seems to be what most of these tasks revolve around. Now, that brings us to the eleventh labour. As we recall, there were only supposed to be ten of them in total, but King Eurythus is a bit mean and cancelled two of them on technicalities. So... So the eleventh labour of Hercules begins with King Eurythus having a hankering for apples. First, said the king, I have a hankering for apples. You've brought me all these fine meat products. Crab, wild boar, cow, bird. You weren't supposed to eat the Stymphalian birds. My doctor says I need more fruit and vegetables in my diet. I want you to find the Garden of Hesperides. Bring me some golden apples from the sacred apple tree of Hera. Hera, repeated Hercules, the goddess who hates me more than anyone in the world. You want me to steal her apples? Yep. Hercules' lion skin cape felt warmer than usual. Sweat trickled down his neck. And this garden is where exactly? I have no idea. I hear it's far to the west. But I was just in the west. I was as far to the west as you can go. The Hesperides are the daughters of the Titan Atlas, Eurythus said helpfully. Perhaps you could ask Atlas where to find the garden. And where do I find Atlas? I guess you'll have to ask someone who knows about Titans. Happy hunting! So Atlas is one of the Titans who came before the Greek gods. The gods rose up against the Titans and defeated them all. And so they're all suffering various punishments all over the shop. Um, so Hercules had to go and find somebody who could direct him to Atlas. Um, so he found Prometheus who was supposedly the titan who introduced the human race to fire. So, 
Hercules found and helped Prometheus, and then Prometheus gave him directions to the garden. Prometheus told Hercules that Atlas dwells in a mountain that cannot be found by humans, unless they know exactly where to look, and he gave him directions. Once he gets to that mountain, he would see the Garden of the Hesperides very close by, but he mustn't get the apples himself. The dragon laid on guards the tree, and he cannot be killed, even by someone as strong as Hercules. Besides, if he took the apples by force, Hera would be within her rights to smite him dead on the spot, which she really wants to do, because as we mentioned in part one of this video, she hates Hercules. So, you have to persuade Atlas to fetch the apples for you, said Prometheus. The Hesperides are his daughters. He can visit the garden easily, and the dragon will not bother him. But isn't Atlas stuck holding up the sky? This was the punishment Atlas was given for being a titan when the gods rose up and fought them. He has to hold up the sky. Prometheus smiled. Well, I can't solve all your problems. You'll have to figure out that part yourself. Once he had directions, Hercules thanked the grungy titan and went on his way. He had a lot of time on the road to think, so when he finally found Atlas, he had a pretty good idea of what to say. The old Titan general crouched on a mountaintop in the dark reaches of the northern wastelands. Atlas still wore his battle-scarred, lightning-melted armour from the war with the gods a thousand years before. His skin was as dark as old pennies from being out in the elements so long. He knelt with his arms raised and propped up on his back was the base of an enormous swirling funnel cloud, a tornado that took up the entire sky. Probably because it was the sky. Great Atlas, Hercules called. He wasn't just throwing out compliments. Atlas was twice the size of Prometheus and twice as buff. Even after a millennium of brutal punishment, he looked impressive. What do you want, puny mortal? The Titan's voice boomed. Apples, said Hercules. Atlas grunted. I suppose you mean the apples from my daughter's garden. The old titan pointed with his chin. Hercules hadn't noticed before, but down the other side of the mountain, in a valley about a mile away, a beautiful garden glowed with reddish purple light like a perpetual sunset. Tiny figures, women in white, danced among the flowers. At the centre of the garden, a huge apple tree reached toward the sky. Even from this distance, Hercules could see the golden fruit glinting in its branches and the serpentine form of Ladon, the dragon twisting around its trunk. Hercules was tempted to march down there, kill the dragon, and take the apples himself. It seemed so simple, but he figured Prometheus hadn't been lying to him, even if he could kill the dragon. Hera would blast him to dust the moment he plucked the fruit. Yeah, Hercules agreed, those apples. You'll never get them yourself, said Atlas. Prometheus told me. Atlas knit his sweaty eyebrows. You know Prometheus? Tell you what, since you help Prometheus, I'll help you. But it won't be easy. You'll have to hold the sky for me while I fetch the apples. Hercules had been anticipating this. Fine, but you'll have to swear on the river Styx that you'll come back. Atlas chuckled. Don't trust me, eh? I can't blame you. All right. I swear on the river Styx that I will come back here with the apples. But are you sure you can hold the weight of the sky? You're pretty small. Pfft. Hercules untied his lion skin cape and tossed it aside. Hand it over. You're probably thinking, dude, it's the sky. How can you hold it, much less hand it over? And if it was so heavy and painful, why didn't Atlas just drop it and walk away? It doesn't work that way. Take it from me. If Atlas had dropped the sky and tried to run, it would have crashed down and flattened everything in sight, including the Titan and his daughters. As for how you can hold it, well, unless you've done it, it's hard to describe. Imagine a 40 million ton top spinning on your back, its sharp point digging in between your shoulder blades. It pretty much sucks, but you have to bear the weight as best you can or you'll get crushed. Hercules knelt next to Atlas. Slowly and carefully, Atlas shifted the load from his shoulders to Hercules's. The hero was small, but he didn't collapse under the burden. 
I'm impressed, Atlas said. Just get the apples, Hercules grunted. This is heavy. Atlas chuckled. Don't I know it. Be back in a jiffy. Atlas's idea of a jiffy was not the same as Hercules's. The Titan ambled down to the Garden of the Hesperides, had a nice long chat with his daughters, enjoyed a leisurely picnic, spent some time petting laid on the dragon, then finally gathered an armload of the apples. Meanwhile, Hercules's muscles were turning to putty. His limbs shook, sweat trickled into his eyes. The sky churned, digging into his back so hard it was going to leave a nasty bruise. Hercules had never felt so weak. He wasn't sure he could hold out. At long last, Atlas returned, whistling, Thank you, my friend. I'd forgotten how good it feels to be free. Great. Now take back the sky. Well, here's the thing. I swore to come back with the apples, which I did. I never promised to take the sky and let you go. Hercules muttered some unprintable curses. Now, now, Atlas said. Let's not be rude. You're doing great. I'm just going to take my daughters, gather an army, and go destroy Mount Olympus where the gods live. All right, Hercules said. You win. Yes, I do. But one last favour before you go, please. I helped Prometheus bear his punishment. The least you can do is give me a little more comfort to bear yours. Atlas hesitated. What did you have in mind? The pointy bit on the sky is killing my back. I hear you, buddy. I really need a pillow. I know. I begged the gods for a king-size one with extra filling. They wouldn't listen. Well, then here's your chance to prove you're more merciful than the gods. Take the sky again for a second. Let me fold my lion skin cloak and put it behind my neck. Then I'll take the sky from you forever. I promise. Atlas should have just laughed and walked away. But the Titan General wasn't completely heartless. He didn't hate mortals like Hercules. He only hated the gods. Maybe he also felt a teensy bit guilty for inflicting his punishment on a puny demigod. Or maybe he just liked the idea of appearing more generous than Zeus. All right, he said. I am way too nice for my own good. You're the best, Hercules agreed. Atlas sat down the golden apples. He knelt next to the demigod and Hercules shifted the weight of the sky back onto the titan's shoulders. Hercules hobbled over to the golden apples. He gathered them up in his lion skin cape. Thanks, Atlas. See ya. What? Atlas bellowed. You promised. I didn't promise on the river Styx. Come on, dude. That's trickery 101. Have fun holding the sky forever. Hercules could still hear Atlas bellowing curses when he was 500 miles away. We have two more constellations from this story, one of which came from the 11th labor, and one of which is just Hercules himself. This constellation here is the constellation of Hercules, who was immortalized in the night sky by Zeus. And this constellation is Draco the dragon. There are many dragons which appear in Greek mythology to whom this constellation are attributed, but one of them is the dragon from the Garden of the Hesperides from this myth. So not to leave you hanging on how the story ends, the final labour of Hercules was to go into the underworld and steal Cerberus, the three-headed dog that belongs to Hades, who is the ruler of the underworld. Cerberus is kind of like Fluffy, the three-headed dog from Harry Potter. So when he completed this, some more strife fell upon Hercules after he'd completed his labours and he sadly died. But the gods decided to make him an immortal and he earned his place up in Olympus and he served as a gatekeeper. Thank you for joining me for this week's story time and I hope I'll see you soon. Bye!